Hello! If you've arrived here looking for instructions on printing these models, you're in the right place. Go to this timecode for the printing instructions, or hang around for the whole story. Hello, and welcome back to Tech Ambrosia. It's December. Whether you celebrate a holiday this month or not, I have a present for you. Yes, you. If you've been following me on my Twitter, you know that for the last two-ish months, on and off in my spare time, I've been working on a space-saving storage system for my vintage CPUs. They say that necessity is the mother of invention, right? Well, necessity was the name of the game here. I was in desperate need of a storage solution for my piles of CPUs. Piles that kept getting larger and larger. So, I did what any good geek would do when confronted with a problem of personal organization. I ignored it. For way too long. But eventually, when it finally started getting really out of hand, I plugged my squirrel brain in and hook cooked up this simple random access CPU storage system. And today, I want to share that with you. Welcome to this episode of Alchemy. Bottoms up! I live in a one-bedroom apartment, and floor space is at an incredible premium, especially since I want to keep my living room dedicated to entertainment and VR. With that in mind, I needed a way to organize my CPUs without resorting to things like flat pack trays or conventional drawers. I wanted maximum storage density, but also the ability to find a CPU when I needed it without having to rummage through clutter. I started by taking the largest of the CPUs I needed to store, my socket A Athlons, and designing a tray to fit them as snugly as possible. 50mm square CPU meet 52mm square tray. Beautiful. Very quickly, I discovered what I'm sure many of you already know. Socket A, Socket 370, and Socket 7 are all largely the same size, and the Athlon trays needed only very minor tweaks to fit these other CPUs. With that discovery under my belt, I started looking at my LGA 775 CPUs, which had multiplied since doing my research on the NetBurst November videos this year. Well, at least the one video that I got published, anyway. I started designing a carrier tray around a random Smithfield Pentium D, and then remembered that later Intel CPUs look really similar to these. Sure enough, my LGA 1156, first-gen Core i7, was almost the same size, and with some adjustments to the lower cutout of the tray, fit perfectly as well. Bonus! Since Intel has kept basically the same CPU package form factor for 17 years, this tray will fit every desktop CPU Intel's produced up through Rocket Lake. So anything from a Pentium 4 Prescott on LGA 775 up on through the Core i9 11900K. While it won't fit in that tray, Alder Lake could fit in this shelving system as well, it just needs its own trays. But I don't have an Alder Lake CPU to measure and test with. So, with the LGA 775 revelation in mind, I started wondering if my CPU shelves could accommodate other CPUs. Next, I looked at my post-Athlon XP AMD CPUs, starting with socket 939. And wouldn't you know, that shape looks familiar. Yep. AMD has also been using basically the same size CPU packaging since about 2004, and this tray will fit any AMD desktop CPU from Athlon 64s on socket 754 or 939, all the way through to Ryzen CPUs and APUs on socket AM4. Alright, well that's literally all modern CPUs covered, so what about older CPUs? Again, it's not a problem, as long as they're physically smaller than socket 7 at 50mm on a side. That means, for example, socket 3 486s are a shoe-in, as demonstrated by these two prime examples here. And there's no reason you couldn't go older. PGA, LCC, and PLCC chips from the 386 and earlier eras would also fit. They just need their own trays. And again, I don't have any to measure and test with. So, if up to this point you're saying, shut up and take my money, I have some good news for you. If you have a 3D printer, you can print these. I'm releasing the models for them today. But before you run off to print them, there are some instructions. 
You're going to need some calipers so you can measure a couple of test prints and the CPUs themselves to make sure everything fits together. Now these calipers don't need to be anything impressive. The, the cheap ones on Amazon or eBay will work just fine for this. The first thing you need to do is print off one of the CPU trays for a CPU you have on hand and want to store in the shelf system. Make sure this tray prints successfully and the CPU fits in the tray. That's critical. Every 3D printer is a little bit different when it comes to horizontal expansion and dimensional accuracy. If the CPU doesn't fit, you're going to need to scale up the tray in your slicer, although probably by only a tiny amount. You can figure out this tiny amount by measuring the difference between the CPU and the tray. Here's what the differences should be, at least according to the prints I've been getting out of my Ender 3. Once you've got your trays fitting your CPUs correctly, you can use one of the trays as a sizing blueprint and scale the shelves accordingly. I've included a small sizing print explicitly for doing this. This little widget is a single CPU shelf, and it prints without supports in the same orientation as the final print. Print it out at 100% scale. Don't worry about it fitting your printed trays, it's not going to, and this is on purpose. Once more, get out your calipers and measure the inside of the shelf runners versus the outside of your test CPU tray. This difference is the minimum amount of scaling you'll need to apply to the final shelf print to get the trays to fit in the shelves. I recommend adding another half a percent or so to make it easier to slide the trays in and out. In my case, for example, I print the CPU trays at 100% scale and the shelves at 102.5% scale. I verified this on my own printer by printing a couple more of these sizing shelves with various amounts of scaling applied and double-checked fitment with the trays. You're free to do the same. The sizing widget is a much faster print than the whole shelf unit. Once you've got a scaling factor you're happy with, plop the whole shelf print, or two if you're fancy, on your build plate, scale it appropriately, and make sure the shelf is laying down flat on the build tray. One shelf takes about nine hours on my Ender 3 with a big TreeTech mainboard at 70 millimeters per second print speed, and uses a bit less than 200 grams of filament. There are definitely optimizations I could make to this model to make it print more quickly and with less filament, and I will be pursuing these over the coming months. As it stands, though, I think this print is really useful, and I'm excited to release it publicly today. I'm looking forward to what the community reaction is with this project, and yes, I'm planning something for high-density storage of slot 1 CPUs as well. Also, at some point, I'd like to build a fitting high-density random access storage system for vintage GPUs, too. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching, and as always, be good to one another. Have a great night!